1840, when Alexis de Tocqueville came here, he said, America is a nation of clubs. He was coming from a nation of homos <laughs> called France. <laughs> but outside of that weak province, the West was a nation of clubs. The Knights of Columbus, the, the, the Know-Nothings, the Shriners. We always had these clubs. And Gloria Steinem decreed them sexist in the 80s, and that was the end of clubs. So I thought, why don't we bring this back? Why don't we have a men's club? No parameters, just dudes. <laughs> you have to be born male, by the way. And believe it or not, that has actually come up. I've had bull dykes come and go, can I be part of this? <laughs> Sorry, no. <laughs> Why not? We're never going to use this. And I go, yeah, just go to the Proud Boys girls and you'll be the most masculine one there as opposed to the most feminine man that we have in our club. Anyway, I gave away the name. But um, I started a men's club called the Proud Boys. And we have one caveat, and that is you have to be a Western chauvinist. <laughs> Now, liberals are lazy, so they hear the word chauvinist and they assume male chauvinist, and that's why I use that word, because they're too lazy to look it up, and it just means a nationalist, a patriot. And you have to think the West is the best. And it exploded. <laughs> There's thousands of members all over the world. There's Proud Boys Africa. There's Proud Boys Japan. We've got about five different divisions in Australia. And I just made it up. <laughs> like the, the re we're called Proud Boys because I went to one of my kids' music recitals and some ponce got up there and while everyone's playing the piano and the violin and doing stuff they tried, he gets up and he goes, Proud of your boy, I'll make you proud of your boy. It's some song from Aladdin. <laughs> And I was looking around for the dad, because I thought there's no way this dad is proud of his boy. And of course, <laughs> he was the child of a single mom. Duh. His mother told him, yeah, sing a song. That's a talent. And there was no dad to say, no, you're not. Play the piano, for Christ's sakes. So we made up these rules. There's just like the Knights of Columbus. There's first degree, second degree, third degree. What's the second degree, Gav? And I went. Uh, you have to get beaten up by five men for how long? Uh, until you can name five breakfast cereals. <laughs> Done. <laughs> third degree. What's the third degree, Gav? Uh, you have to quit porn and uh, get a tattoo. Done. <laughs> it's massive. I, I was saying to uh, Ann Coulter the other day, I'd love to have you come and do a talk at one of our meetups, but you're a woman. I don't know how to do that. Maybe, maybe you could wear a burqa or something. A, <laughs> or you could do a video. And she goes, I don't want to come to your club. I don't want to ruin that. I, she goes, my father was in these kind of clubs. And one day, they just disappeared. And what did men do? They were told it was sexist to congregate, so they went to strip clubs. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's women there, but there's no ladies there. <laughs> and you can fart, and you don't have to pull out chairs for anyone. You can tell offensive jokes. And, and this is considered a crime in today's day and age. And they, they tell us that we're, we're racist and we're anti-Semitic. And I go, what about this black guy who's a member and this Jewish guy who's a member? And they go, they're racist and anti-Semitic. <laughs> so this black guy's a white supremacist? Yes, he is. <laughs> Well, that's handy. He can just sit at home and punch himself in the face all day. Like they're, they're, I used to call it fake news. Then I called it crazy news. It's crazy ex-girlfriend nudes. And these liberals are like, they're psychotic. Calling black guys racist and Ben Shapiro a Nazi. I'm scared of them. I'm scared of them like a drunk chick. You know how she's just on the, at, right at any moment, she could start scratching your face and smashing balls, and you're like, hi, you should probably get a cab at some point. <laughs> That's how we are with the left. And I, I did a talk at, at NYU, and uh, they said, okay, what, you, what you're doing over there uh, is obviously very dangerous. What? I'm just doing a speech that I like Trump, not Hitler. Uh, Trump is Hitler. 
<laughs> so they go, we have a secret back door you can take, and then we'll have security escort. I go, I'm not a pedophile. I'm not there to, to talk about how sexy teenage boys are. I'm talking about how sexy America is. I go, no, we're going through the front. So we walk through this mob of Antifa, and we start singing, proud of your boy. I'll make, and they're going, Nazi, fuck you. And I'm going, I'll make you proud. And they blast me with pepper spray. And then I'm the only one allowed in, and my guys are left to fight. And here's the crucial part. We do. We beat the crap out of them. <laughs> And I couldn't see, I had been whisked in, but I talked to two of our guys who were arrested, and I go, how was that, are you okay? And they go, it was really, really fun. <laughs> they said, violence doesn't feel good, justified violence feels great. <laughs> and fighting solves everything. So, we said, you know what, we're not gonna pick fights, but if they pick fights with us, we're going to finish them. <laughs> and so we go to Deplora Ball, and they had, they had published a hit list of people they're going to kill, basically. They don't want to hurt us, they don't want to silence us, they want us dead. So I notice them on this list and I see them talking on their phone saying, yeah, they're coming down now. And I think, we're in a climate where it's just such a given that the right is evil and the right are all Nazis. They can just sit there and talk on their phones about how they're going to get us. Yeah, here he is, he's walking. So I grab that guy's phone, I throw it away, I, I just lick his face. <laughs> and I shove him. And he's like, did you just lick me? <laughs> and then I start marching into the, and they're throwing feces, they're like monkeys, they're throwing feces at us, and bottles of urine. <laughs> and we have tuxedos on, it's a ball. So we're like, you're disgusting, sir. And then this kid walks in front of me with an anarchist flag, and I shove him out of the way, and he goes, do you want to go? And I go, yes, actually, I would. <laughs> And I smash him in the face. And I cut my knuckles on his teeth because he was so shocked that someone was punching back. So the face I punched was going. <laughs> Boom. And off to the ball we go. And I talked to Anne about it actually afterwards. And she goes, I was so elated to see that punch because it went viral. And she said, conservatives never punch back. And I thought, how bizarre it is that this is a revolutionary act, having a men's club. They used to be ubiquitous, and now it's some sort of terrorist threat. And it's considered so shocking to want to defend yourself. I was talking to a New York Times reporter, Alan Foyer, and he said, have you ever considered uh, just sitting there and taking the beating? That would be a great statement. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I'm not doing that. You can do that. <laughs> I'm not a freedom rider, uh, and these people that we're up against aren't a bunch of rednecks from the 60s. These are crazy ex-girlfriends. You look at the things that get confiscated by the cops, like the Portland Antifa, and there was a knife that's a T-shape. Like, a normal knife isn't good enough for you? You need a T-grip to really get into my juggler and cut my head off? No wonder you're in bed with ISIS. No wonder the far left is so happy to join jihadists in their crusade to burn America to the ground. You're deranged. Trump derangement syndrome is real. So it's sort of like the trans bathrooms where you say, why do you think it's such a big deal that someone else is in your bathroom? And I go, it's not a big deal, but I'm going to stay and fight it. It's like if you said you were me. That doesn't really bother me, but I'm not going to let you do that. You're not me. So I'm not playing your game. And if you think it's a revolution act, revolutionary act to have a men's club, okay, it's a revolutionary act. If you want to come and attack me and pepper spray me and fight me, and they do every day. I mean, just, just yesterday, one of our guys in, in the Vancouver Proud Boys goes to take a pee. Uh, he's alone. Four Antifa jump in there with baseball bats. They mash up his face. He's alone. And he comes out and he goes, he says to the staff, you called them, didn't you? And she goes, I don't know, maybe. And she, she, she goes, call the cops. And she says, no. And uh, she goes, you make me feel unsafe with this black and yellow shirt. And then the story came out just while I was over there. Ezra showed me on his phone. And it said, uh, Proud Boys make staff of bar feel unsafe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the guy with his face hanging off made you feel unsafe. Sorry about that. Won't happen again. 
But instead of being thwarted by all this conflict, we find it kind of inspiring. It's kind of fun. These people are so soft after being placated for all of Obama's term that they're easy prey. When we fought these guys, these Antifa kids in New York, who are all just professor's sons, who are Marxists because daddy told them to, I, I mean, it feels like, it feels sexist to beat them up because when you punch them, it feels like a girl. <laughs> Their faces just cave in. It's like paper mache. In fact, one of our guys, we nicknamed Friar Tuck, he said, I felt bad as I was plowing through them. <laughs> only, it's only fun to beat up the first three. The subsequent ones chip away at your soul. <laughs> So the moral of the story is, we're going to continue being normal, because that's a revolutionary act. We're going to continue being proud of ourselves. We're going to continue getting married, living in the suburbs, having kids, and loving America. And if that's a revolutionary act, then I'm a revolutionary. Thank you very much.